the third part of the focal structure um, theory has to do with movement consciousness or cognitive liberation. Um, so it can't just um, have very strong organizational features. It also needs to be able to make meaning out of the social change action. There has to be a rationale behind what they're trying to do. So oftentimes with movement consciousness, we're interested in how a group formed a collective consciousness within a group in order to achieve a sense of agency, a sense of this is something I am doing, I'm making a difference, I'm changing the way things are done. Usually um, consciousness has to do with an awareness of a problem, some sort of injustice has been done, and out of that, you know, there's a meaning behind what they're trying to do, what they're trying to change. So you'll see within movement consciousness sort of a member versus challenger symbolic relations that they're, they're the enemies you know, and, and the good guys. There's the good guys and the bad guys. Um, and shifting political conditions usually are favorable towards movement activities. So if there are positive cues, it gives them sort of an okay to proceed because of its plausible success. So some sort of awareness that change can be made. So with movement consciousness, you want to give the impression that things are favorable, things can change. We are in a political situation that we can now enter the political process and make a change. Movement consciousness is also an integrative me mechanism within the movement that gives solidarity and purpose to a social movement activity. Basically, it brings people together, gives them a sense of identity, and um, within that, a demand for change. Um, you can definitely see that in, say, Barack Obama's campaign. That's all about change and you know making a difference, and people being part of that feel like that that's their identity, that they feel like that gives them a sense of purpose in what they're trying to do. And finally, movement consciousness is about, um, it's about a, a social phenomenon. It's not just an individual, but feeling like you belong to a certain group, you belong to this um, group that's trying to achieve social change, and um, is a result of group experiences um, that you, as, as part of the group, construct meaning-making processes. The last um, part of the political process theory has to do with movement obstacles and advancing collective interests. So um, you have a strong sense of who you are. You have developed you know, strong organizational features. Um, your movement is, con is conducive within the political structure. But what is it that you're trying to do? What what kind of change are you trying to bring about in the political structure? So in this last section, or the last part, it's really imperative to formulate what are the, the, the movement goals. So the survival of the movement depends on the group's ability to maintain and take advantage of any bargaining position that the group has to advance collective interests. Remember, this is a, a long-term situation. Change doesn't happen overnight. It usually is a process that um, it takes sometimes many years for it to really sort of um, take notice in the political process. Alternatively, political opponents vary in their control or response to movements. Um, there, you, you will have sometimes repression, sometimes an openness to um, social change movements. It, it, it varies. There are four levels of maintenance and response of the movement over time. Um, the, the first level of maintenance has to do with maintaining the organizational components over time. Resources, leadership, membership, and ideology has to be uh, an important uh, feature over the, the, the long haul. Um, another, another level of maintenance and response has to do with the response to pressures of social control or forms of repression. Those who want to protect the status quo and find the movement a threat you have to respond to that. You have to uh, acknowledge what that is and then hopefully um, um, overcome those forms of repression. The third thing would be to build a repertoire of tactics to interact and confront the power structure, either internally through institutionalized means or externally through non-institutionalized tactics. Of course, the former would be less threatening to work within the political process, um, and then the, the latter would be much more threatening. Um, and then the last uh, level of maintenance and response over time has to do with articulating and achieving movement goals, either reform or revolutionary goals. Um, 
again, you have to be very clear what you, what they are, and then once you've achieved them, then you you actually uh, fulfill the point of having a social movement within the political process. So reform goals are limited changes within the established political structure, whereas revolutionary goals are extensive changes that alter the established political structure. Um, there's been some critiques of, um, with regard to the political process model. Um, one of them being which variables matter. Um, there's a lot of different um, factors that go into success or failures. Um, the other question would be which opportunities can afford to miss and which ones cannot, which are the most important factors, which ones, if you don't have this, you know, can the movement still succeed? So I just listed some possible variables to consider, such as the cost of being involved in the movement, the possibilities and likely payoffs, stable and unstable aspects of government, the organizations of previous challengers, the openness and the ideological positions of political parties, changes in public policy, international alliances and the constraints on state policy, state capacity, the geographic scope and repressive capacity of governments, the activity of counter-movement opponents, uh, potential activist perception of political opportunities, and prospect for personal affiliations. All of those are important factors, and given a certain context, given the certain um, kind of people that are involved, all of these can lead to possible success or possible failures, and, and trying to understand that from a political point of view, is really important um, to measure those things. Okay, so the lecture-based activity is to create a movement, and I want you to choose one change that you would like to make at West LA. And if you're not familiar with, with West LA, you've never, you know, this is your first class, you can choose a different school that you're more familiar. Um, and once you've made that choice, um, you need to work within the, the four parts of the theory. Um, consider the structure of political opportunities in which you're trying to make change, the organizational strength, um, how are you going to build an organization that um, can um, achieve some sort of social change within the, within the um, school, how are you going to develop a movement consciousness, what kinds of things are you going to look at in terms of building a sense of solidarity, um, and then look at movement obstacles and advancing collective interests. Um, how are you going to actually achieve this change over the long haul? What are the, the, the factors that you're going to consider? And then the last part, um, just sort of a conclusion, you know, is West LA a place where change can be made? Why or why not?